Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jose, the California beekeeper. Today we are going to have Kelly and Maximus paint some Ross Round boxes. We're new to this, so this is going to be a learning experience. If you have any tips, drop a comment below. We would love to uh, hear from you guys and your tips on the best way to have these get drawn out. If you haven't already subscribed, go down below, hit that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up. Hit that bell to get those notifications when we drop a new video. What we have here is a 10 frame Ross Rounds kit that we purchased. Um, we're gonna open it up and get it prepped for painting. Okay, so this 10 frame kit comes with eight Ross Round frames. Each frame, eight frames, um, has four different Ross Rounds and that makes a total of 32 possible. They clip together like this. And we will show you how these frames work a little later on in the video. Okay, so this kit comes with the eight frames on each side. Um, this is a permanent wall here so that the bees do not build comb um, in between these gaps. This side here has a removable board and these three springs that put pressure to tighten the board against the eight frames. So we'll remove these. Today we're gonna go with this um, paint. It's an exterior paint with primer and do one or two coats depending on what the box needs. But we are relocating our station to paint in a different area because the bees were getting active. So. painting the exterior of the boxes we're not going to paint the interior um, and the purpose of painting the boxes is just to protect them from being weathered so we just want to get in every little crevice hopefully these boxes will last as long as possible they are a little bit pricey but the honeycomb can be as well so hopefully it pays off we get a lot of requests for these honeycomb and I've actually only personally had one once in my life. I bought it from a co-op in Sacramento. Um, and yeah, it was very appealing. When you live in the city and you don't see that very often, um, the honey and the comb. So I totally understand the appeal that people have um, to eat these. I mean, they're really good. They're okay, so I got the first coat done on that one and we'll move on to the second one. Max has already started it oh, for okay. us. Good job, babe. I'm painting my camera. I see it. Mama, I see it. So a little trick that we'll do in between, um, in between the painting layers is we'll just wrap these up in some plastic, uh, really tight, and then that will keep them moist until this paint dries and we we're able to paint the second coat. All right, let's go, baby. Hi guys, so we are out here in the canyon today where our bee yard is, and it's a pretty hot day, 100 degrees. We are sweating, so I'm sitting in the shade right now. Um, I painted the Ross Round boxes yesterday, and then we were planning on painting a sec second coat, but since I'm pregnant, I was extremely tired and just went to sleep for the rest of the day, so we did not get the second coat on. 
Ideally, we would have painted the second coat and eventually we will need to paint it. Um, this is what they look like. So they look good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the color. And, and this morning I pulled the frames out and put some foundation in them, which is very simple. So I'm gonna be showing you guys what that process is like. I'll take one. Okay, so here we go. Here's one of the frames. So again, this is a four piece brass round frame and it snaps together. It has these little teeth in each of the four corners. You can see it right there and it just snaps in. Okay, and then, so this piece of wax foundation, it's very thin. It comes cut to size. They're made specifically for these Ross rounds. So you just lay it inside, line it up, like that and then you just snap this other half on oops so you want to make sure that these white frames are in here and they line up they have little legs inside and there's a certain way that they line up so you just rotate it make sure it's lined up and then snap it in and these white um, frames that go within the larger brown frame you will need to replace because when you harvest the honey these will actually snap out the comb will stay inside of this white frame and this white frame will go into the packaging the plastic packaging for the uh, honey to be sold so yes max was playing with a couple of these and actually he's playing with all of them but he ruined this one See how this one does. So it is damaged. Oh, there you go. Now it's fixed. <laughs> it's all part of having a toddler. They like to get into everything. We really like to support Max playing with um, anything he wants pretty much with beekeeping because he's learning and we really want him to love beekeeping. These frames, for example, he pulled out, started to open them up, and even though he damaged, you know, this one piece of foundation, that's repairable, and we have a lot more. So, he's learning. Hopefully, you know, he has a passion for it when he grows up, and will stick with it. But that's all to be foreseen. I'm going to put my hood on, and then we'll go out to the bee yard, and we will show you how we stack these. We have two hives that Jose has already been preparing uh, for these Ross Brown. Ah, bugs keep going on me. So I'm actually from the city, um, born and raised in Sacramento, and I'm terrified of bugs, even of bees. So whenever you see me around bees, you will see me suited up. <laughs> even after, you know, four or five years of being around these bees, I'm still very much afraid of them, so. <laughs> I will be putting my hood on here. All right. So I put all the frames into the box and then I put the little metal clips in. And again, the purpose of the metal clips is to sandwich together these eight frames so that the there's no gaps in between each frame. Um, we don't want the bees to build, to build comb in between the frames. We want them to only build it inside of the frames. So, the box is ready to go. And we are going to put a queen excluder um, underneath the Ross round box and above the hives. And the purpose of the queen excluder is so that the queen cannot enter into the box of Ross rounds. Um, we don't want her laying eggs up top. We just want them to build the honey out. So we already hefted this hive and um, when I say hefted, that means lifting it pretty much and checking the weight on it. We only want to do the heaviest hives, the strongest hives. Um, so we will open this up and give you guys a look. They're pretty calm, um, we, but we will scrape off. We will scrape off this wax and it's not necessary, it's just preference. It's 
just to clean it up. All right, so we got that all cleaned up. Just used my hive tool, ran it across each one of the 10 frames and uh, cleaned up all the wax. Next, we will add the queen excluder. We only want the bees to travel up and make honey up top. So we just line it up and close it up. All right, we'll move on to the next one. It's a hot day out. <laughs> we are sweating my eyes around the, uh, my face around the frames of my glasses are sweating. So remove this lid. couple puffs and the smoke is just to um, keep them calm and encourage them to go down into the hive as we scrape the top this one doesn't have too much wax so all the wax that we get from the hives we do save it and as it accumulates um, we do have a buyer for it who purchases it purchases it and uses it for um, candle making and the name of that company is Magical Bee Candle Company. And they make all different types of candles, different scents, and they sell it on Etsy. So we'll drop the link below for that. You guys can check them out. Great candles, great product. Small um, family business located in Oregon. Now we'll be putting the Queen Excluder on. Just set it right on top, line it up. Next a 10 frame box again with eight frames of Ross rounds just want to make sure it's lined up so based on the amount of nectar that we have coming in we'll be checking on these um, in about a week or a week and a half really just depends on what we see going on around here but yeah probably about a week we'll come out and take a look to see how they're doing Now that we got those Ross rounds and she showed you how to do those, um, we are gonna stack a couple of these double deeps that we got here. And so we're gonna try something out. We're gonna stack one without an excluder and one with an excluder. Uh, we just wanna see how, how well they work them when they have an excluder to the ones that don't. Um, whatever they lay, whatever she lays with brood into the foundation, what we'll do is we'll take those those frames of brood and we'll just put it into something that's a little weaker um, and that'll just remain as a regular, regular frame in one of these regular colonies and we won't use them for our honey supers um, or honey frames. But the ones that do get drawn out with honey, we'll, use, we'll extract those. Those will remain as honey frames in our honey supers. So we're gonna be stacking these two side by side just so we can make it a little easier on us. And uh, you know, you could tell there's frost right in through here. We did crank the feed about a week ago just to make sure that they are not going to store any of that syrup in our honey supers. So everything's all sucked up in the feeders. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video on our Ross rounds. We will be posting another video on an update on how these Ross rounds are doing. So stay tuned on that. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go down below, hit that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up, and thank you for watching. Don't follow us on Instagram, Facebook, the California Beekeeper. Go check us out.